Legs are still a little bit sore, but if you wake up... Hey, Tank, are you there? Tank? Oh, don't even. <laughs> are you there? Ah, he's awake. Okay, so someone's awake. Uh, it's the day after. Yes, the day battle. after. The day after. Uh, we are. So we're going to a uh, skyline today. We're going yeah. to the skyline. I don't know where the skyline is, so we're just gonna follow ways. But hopefully, we get to uh, uh, what? Uh, come across other riders yep. uh, along the road. So Should it's 5 a.m. in the morning, yes. the day after. Legs good again. Okay, let's go. So, today's agenda is uh, we're gonna go up in Kirino. They call it the Skyline View Deck. Uh, it's been recommended by the local riders. It's a it's a very popular destination for a lot of the riders. We're gonna set off early in the morning. Be back here before lunch because uh, we gotta check out of the hotel and back to Manila. That's race vacation for us. This is our host for the whole entire weekend. This is Ban Ao Resort. So if you're in Kandon, I think uh, you'll find this. But everyone still is asleep. Those are the stuff. Skyline, skyline, skyline. Okay, let's go. Let's go, tank. Fire on. We're leaving the hotel and we'll be back later for lunch. Ready for some Skyline View Deck? Oh yeah, oh yeah. Okay, here we go. Clear. Let's do it. Our episode today will be in the Philippines. Uh, we start in Kandon City after yesterday's race in Tagudin. And Kandon is in Ilocos Sur. So from Kandon, we go straight to the foothills. Uh... Final destination in Skyline View Deck in Quirino. Still in Ilocos Sur. Uh, the roads are brand new. They've, uh, according to the locals, they've finished just recently as early as 2018. So we're very lucky that at this moment, those roads have been uh, paved. So this is a uh, simple view. Photos uh, taken by the locals of this, uh, you can say, one of the most popular tourist spots. Uh, for uh, the locals uh, very popular destination by cyclists by residents by hikers by everyone including uh, people who love biking so today we start at Ban Ao Resort this is where we are uh, staying for the past three days here in Ilocos Sur this is in Kandon and then we go through the national highway turning right at uh, this corner going to uh, the uh, city of Lubnak. We follow this road and as soon as you see the uh, undulating lines, that's exactly the start of the climbs. And from here, we uh, pass through San Emilio, uh, municipality of Sa San Emilio. Um, the climbs start getting nastier once you get to Kamangaan. I remember this place because this is where we encountered the 26% gradient. This Kamangaan is where uh, Tommy started to walk because it was really, really surprisingly uh, steep. Um, we never expected how difficult this course was. We've, we've just heard of it, but we've never ridden this ever. So it's my first time. It's Tommy's first time. So hopefully you enjoy the episode. We start here. So this is the Kandon Plaza. Very quaint uh, park. That's a St. Joseph Institute. And they have this huge brick wall. We're 
going to go there. Okay, on our way to Skyline. Wow. The sun is just picking up. Right for you, CRZ. Good morning. No question. That's how you say hello to the house. Oh, he See? <laughs> he responded. This is it. This is it. Game. Yeah. There we go. Steep Steepest gradient. gradient. It goes all the way up now. This episode is all about climbing, obviously, because. Uh, we come from sea level all the way up to 3,000 feet. That's 1,050 meters. For this ride, since we just came from a triathlon event uh, 24 hours ago, uh, we had no choice but to use our uh, time trial bike. So this setup is not really recommended for climbs like this. But since we don't have a choice, we just gotta use what we have. But what's the difference? A time trial bike is usually one to two kilograms heavier than a typical road bike or a climbing bike. The reason is the disc wheel and the front wheel a lot heavier uh, because weight would be your friend for high speed flat uh, roads. Here we go again. Steep grade. Yuki. Whoa. Yeah. It's, like a, it's like a lump of cheese. <laughs> lump of cheese. Look at that. Whoa.
it in again, shift the low gear. Courses like this are very useful for uh, posture development. Uh, sometimes in CRZ, one of the courses or one of the basic fundamentals that we teach all the newbies uh, is how to hold posture. And sometimes and very often, we try to look for courses that offer really, really steep gradients because it amplifies the effort to hold a posture. Usually a posture like what you see here on the video to be able to produce the same torque on the flats, you have to go at really, really high speed. Uh, but sometimes going high speed on the highway can be very dangerous for especially for newbies. So instead of Going on the main highway or on open roads and trying to speed up at 38 40 45 kilometers per hour You get the same benefit and physiological adaptation when uh, You do the same exact workout on uh, steeper gradients because this will um, force your core muscles just like this uh, the reason why you notice that the elbow is bent is because we're trying to use as much muscles as possible to help us produce torque on the legs so uh, if you look closely on this posture we're using the bicep tricep uh, abdominal muscle even the back muscles just to turn the pedals together. Gradient, 20. 20%, 20%. When slopes exceed or breach the 12% mark, it's very advisable that you start assisting your quads to produce torque. Torque is the force or what you call rotating force and rotating force is very important in cycling. 20%. Extended lengths of gradients exceeding 15% for this particular case 20% very often but very rarely that you encounter 20% gradients on extended periods but for this particular course I think it's a freak of nature I think DPWH really loved and designed this road for cyclists to hurt everyone 20% uh, gradient 25% gradient is not a joke if you've ever tried one you'll understand what we're talking about. So uh, on this gradients, you notice that the elbow is very, very close to the uh, knee because we try to be as compact as possible to uh, produce torque using the abdominal muscles. 21%, 21. 21. Even for seasoned cyclists, 20 to 25% grade can be very challenging. In fact, it's not can be challenging. It is very challenging. Um, at this grades, especially for hobbyists or enthusiasts who are not pros, pros have the luxury of time to do a lot of mileage. But for majority of us, we don't really have the opportunity or the chance to spend a lot of time building strength or muscle through mileage so instead of depending on number of hours or mileage to develop the skill or strength to climb these types of uh, abnormal gradients we use basic science the basic fundamental of torque means that um, we require the help of more muscles to be able to turn the pedals just for recollection torque is the is a rotating force 
rotating force is the one that translates our strength to forward motion uh, using the crank to turn the wheels so this particular posture that we see here is very common when you watch or if you're a fan of the Tour de France or uh, professional riders you see that they tend to bend their elbows simply because it physiologically activates the triceps, 19%. the biceps, the obliques, the abdominal muscles, the back muscles. And when you start climbing extended tiers, just like now, uh, on this particular section, this 20% gradient just goes on and on and on and on. It's like it's never going to end. If your body is not ready for this, you'll never be able to activate these muscles. And this is the reason why when you attend CRZ training camps, we teach every newbie the most basic fundamental of how to activate your core muscles to develop torque. And that's why uh, across the board, everyone knows how to climb. 24. 24%, 24%. <laughs> It's not easy. It's very, very difficult. The most difficult part of this technique is how to hold that posture and position for the longest time. Very often, whenever we ride, uh, let's say, the black wall, which exceeds 30% uh, gradients, we always experience cramping on the biceps, triceps, and abdominals because this is what we use whenever we encounter really, really steep gradients. 24%. You'll often notice in all our videos, most of our videos, whenever we climb gradients that exceed 15%, we hardly stand up. So we don't really advise standing up uh, for most of our students because when you stand up, you start activating more muscles that can increase your heart rate. Once your heart rate goes up, then it's game over. You have to really, really rest. So to conserve a lot of energy, is it's advisable for you to sit down move forward in the saddle because if you don't move forward in the saddle the front wheel will pop up so if you watch here i try as much as possible to sit at the tip of the saddle at the front holding on to the hoods so that i can generate a little bit more torque We now reach the section called Kamangaan. I remember this uh, section vividly because that switchback was really, really nasty. It literally went from flat to instant 26% gradient. I was really struggling and I had to hold on to the hoods as much as I can. And this is the reason why we try to shorten the stem for most of the bikes that don't fit during our bike fitting because it's imperative or it's very important that you can hold your hoods because that's a position where you can hold on to the end of the hoods to uh, hang on and activate your core muscles that's why when you see all our bike fitting videos the number one reference point uh, if the bike fits you is if you can hold the end of the hoods so I'm focusing on my hand right now you'd see where I'm holding Tom had to give up because he had to sprint on that 26% gradient he did we didn't know if it would uh, end soon or uh, it would be extended so apparently it's extended uh, Tom apparently blew up uh, but when you blow up it's okay to stop recover and then just restart again and as uh, the the road starts to level down and when we say level down at this point we were still at 15% gradient uh, it went down to 10% gradient we were welcomed by this super wonderful wide road and these roads, according to the locals, were recently 
paved uh, back in the days only motorcycles or uh, rugged jeepneys could pass through here but now if you see clearly the roads have widened and it's fresh cement so good news for all of us cyclists before it was always mountain bikers who can pass by here now the roads go all the way up to Cervantes connecting Sagada I mean that's a dream come true for most bike packers um, so maybe this is the right time to do it uh, Tom has recovered I, I was waiting for him instead of stopping because if I stop my legs would freeze up um, one of the strategies that we do is that we try to wait without stopping uh, because everyone knows that uh, stopping will reset everything and it's more difficult to uh, uh, go back to speed up again one of the key strategies that we employ to recover is going to the big ring going to the big ring on the flat section after a steep climb uh, allows us to have a lower rpm but maintain the speed a lower rpm will then help our heart rate to go down This ride demonstrates how biomechanics can help everyone. I mean, one of the biggest example would be Tom. Tom is a behemoth. I mean, he's not a climber. He's not stick thin like Nicole or Tito Derwin. But because his technique is correct, his bike fit is correct, his posture is correct, his made-to-measure bike literally amplifies his strength. You can see how he can grind himself up to go up this super steep gradients. He usually just gives up on those 20% grades, just like now. But 20% yeah. is 20%. I think everyone would agree that 20% uh, gradient is a challenge. Uh, but to summarize it all, Tom uh, is a freak of nature to be able to race 24 hours ago and still be able to climb the impossible climb. They call this uh, an impossible race. So according to Nicole, there was a race here previously that was organized it was called the impossible race because the roads were impossibly super steep so going back to our discussion uh we're about to approach this intersection uh, we kind of lost we didn't know how far was skyline was so uh, we had to look for signages uh, we've been riding for so long you couldn't find any store or um, refreshment so we were desperate to look for a rest stop and uh, I think we finally found uh, paradise when we start seeing these signages See if they have something there real quick. Oh yeah. Oh there. Yeah. Okay. Ah, we're gonna go with the skylines. Dude, that was solid, huh? Take a little break for a while. I think we're close, huh? How many kilometers from here? Uh, either inside three or inside five. We deserve a drink. We'll resume in a moment. Te, te, na pa English ko ya. Kwentuhan sila o. Ala eh! 
Um, uh, I think we gotta borrow the truck. Mama. Mama. So that's yeah. tabako. Tabako yeah, yeah, tabako <laughs> And then the white one is? Apo. Apo. Yeah, yeah. This one. And then this one is bua. Bua. Yeah. You can mix. You can mix this. Ah. You think it's gonna make us stronger in cycling, Tom? Yeah. No. No? It's gonna make your head spin. <laughs> I did I did it one time. Pag masubrahan mong spin. mag yung tabako oh. nito, ikaw ay malasing. Ah, malalasing ka? Oh, sobrang oh. lasing. Walang si yung tuhod mo, wala na. Hindi ka na makatayo. Mm. Tapos ikaw ay pawisan. Tapos ngunguyain lang hanggang mm. mamaya, no? And then like this, you have to take. Okay, okay, okay. okay. okay <laughs> let's buy what? How many? <laughs> Dude, look at that. Did you take it to grandma? No, 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 no. <laughs> So that's the simple life. After that quick stop, we resume our riding uh, because we heard from Nicole. Nicole is from uh, Ilocos Sur from Santa Cruz. He's part of the developmental team uh, for Ronda Pilipinas. Here he is, stick thin, literally has the physique of a super climber uh, he was very kind enough to accompany us and um, show us around skyline and uh, well we resume our ride looking for skyline i think we were five kilometers away from uh, our destination uh, we were just really really fortunate that the roads are in pristine condition i mean you can in this can, it can never be better than this
this particular section would uh, showcase the difference in climbing technique um, so this is me trying to use as much core muscles as possible Nicole has the uh, talent and skill and uh, the advantage of youth to be able to uh, stand up accelerate uh, go around so but for most of us when you're uh, reaching your senior uh, sometimes being a little bit um, smarter on how to use your reserved energy uh, would give us more uh, you can say uh, a fighting chance in surviving these types of courses when I use the big ring it's just because I'm trying to rest my heart rate uh, and when I do this I try to use the bigger muscle groups to be able to flush the lactic acid uh, Nicole here he's a pure climber uh, literally his technique makes he makes it look easy can never compete with that so instead of trying to stand up and increasing my heart rate since I don't have the luxury of uh, fitness uh, we just have to use uh, as much muscle groups as possible sitting down and that's to conserve energy finally we are about to reach the one kilometer to go mark Definitely, I was very happy to hear that it's one kilometer to go. Little did I know that that one kilometer is the hardest part of the course. I thought we were scot-free. And when I saw this downhill, I thought, wow. Spanish trail. It was so deceiving. When Nicole said it was one kilometer to go and it was all downhill, we were happy. Tom and I were very, very happy. Uh, so to conserve energy, we try to use physics, be as aerodynamic as possible, just to rise through the wind. Um, this saves you so much uh, energy and uh, saves you more time. But that was it. That was the uh, downhill. From here on, Nicole didn't tell me. Tom and I we were surprised. Everything became steeper and steeper and steeper. 20%, 21%, 22% gradient. I no idea when it would stop but sometimes when you're not familiar with the course you have to be very careful from using so much energy Tommy, you need to go ahead huh? The gradients were extremely steep. You would literally stall and stop. If you don't keep going, the front wheel will pop up and you'll halt to a dead stop. And one of the techniques to avoid this is just to zigzag around the roads, well, assuming there's no incoming traffic. So Tom was kind enough to uh, zigzag around the road just to reduce the gradient. Uh, same with Nicole. Uh, smart kid uh, I think this is playground so I had to do the same thing I had to cut across the road just to lessen the slope Nicole does the same thing because if we don't do that uh, you'd, you'd go to a dead stop uh, but this momentum you have to keep going and they call this the zipper technique but there comes a point where the gradient really bites and you're just full of lactic acid your heart is about to blow up uh, the safest thing to do is just to stop instead of just falling down i've seen people fall down from their bikes because they just had to uh, push it i had to really really be careful from stalling so i just keep on um, reducing my speed even at five or four kilometers per hour tom had to sprint i was really surprised i thought he was a monster at this moment because he was sprinting away from me and then true enough that's it blows up has to take a, the breather um, rest for a while reset and uh, we're gonna wait for him in the top hello good morning ah. 
At this junction, I was, I think, 500 meters to the summit. Knowing the distances allows you to measure your uh, effort considerably. That's why whenever you watch the Tour de France, they have those kilometer tickers because it gives the director sportive or the coach of the team um, good information because uh, the riders have to measure their effort. So knowing that I'm just 400 meters away from the summit um, gives me a little bit of uh, encouragement to go a little bit faster, slowly, not going crazy and sprinting. Um, but my recovery would require me to go to the big ring, lower the heart rate, keep on going. That's the end of the road. That's the um, end of the summit. Not really the summit, but that's the end of the steepest part of the climb. And then from here on, it's scot free. So we literally made it to the skyline. I mean, you can see it from above over there. So, uh, finish line, that was, I mean, I can guarantee this is tough. One of the toughest routes. So I think this is where everyone stops. Uh, where the motorcycle stops, very popular destination. Okay, I can't believe that was around 25, 26% graded. Hey! Perfect job, so that's it. Skyline! Woohoo! Okay, we'll see you in a moment. It's downhill from now. Thank you, man. Our boy from Ilocos, Santa Cruz. Okay, there it is. I think so. Good man. Perfect. Okay, very good. Here it is. There it is. We made it. So that's officially skyline. I think we exceeded more than 20%. Ah, we made it. Success. Skyline. Oh man. Okay, we're gonna wait for Tom. Then uh, we're gonna go. Skyline view deck coming up. Here comes Tommy boy. Where is he? He should be there already. There he is. Tommy, finish line. Ole, ole. <laughs> Come on. Come on, boy. Here. Yeah. That was big. That was super, huh? That was what hard. was that percent? More than 20%, I guess. Yeah. Right? Ah, uh, that was more than 20%, huh? Yeah, solid. Okay, okay, so we officially, officially found a view deck. Yes, here we so are. So what's the official distance, Tom? 40.9. 40.9 from our hotel. On the dot, yeah. On the dot, right? Super Perfect. Good. Okay, so that's the infamous stuff. I don't know if we can get, even get in, but it doesn't matter because we're tired. Again, again. And then there's a sticker spot. Oh, sticker spot. Oh, I didn't know Gold for Gold is here. Yeah. He, uh, so this guy won the race yesterday. They're everywhere. Ah, everywhere. Okay. So uh, Thomas is going to check out the view. This area is supposed to be a uh, landmark in Quirino. It's very popular amongst uh, motorcyclists. So now I understand why this is not a regular route for cyclists. It's really a little bit, uh, you can say, advanced. Uh, so they have this uh, Skylove locks. Whoa, dude. Whoa. So from Skylove, look at this. Beautiful. Now that is a view.
man, that was a worth it climb. And uh, we're on top of the hill. So, so there's a tourist over there. Hey, tourist. Oh, it says here, don't spit on your mommy. Okay, so. Yeah. This is why you do this stuff. Our boys are here. Mr. Macho Man Derby is here. This is what they've been talking about, why we had to climb those nasty 20% grade. Be here. Okay. Wow, it so it goes all the way down there. So it goes all the way down there. That highway. So if you follow that road, it's supposed to go to Cervantes and the roads are already fixed going all the way to Sagada. So Sagada is somewhere out there. Whew. So now that we figured that the expressway from Manila to here is a lot easier, so I think we can ride here more often. <laughs> no, it's, it's easier to drop by here now. We took the expressway, NLEX, TPLEX, go out to Rosario, and you can enjoy this, huh? Wow, look at that road. So what's that new road? Is that the new road? Yes sir, that is the most impossible ride. The most impossible ride. Uh, may nag-ride kasi dito na taga Maynila din. Yeah, the impossible race. Mm, yes sir. This is the impossible race. So we're gonna do the impossible race next time. But we gotta bring climbing bikes, not a time trial bike. <laughs> so I think we need a well-deserved uh, snack. We got the classic yeah. Luz Caldo. Uh, while Tommy is trying to uh, put some stickers on. I think he wants to make a mark on him. Ah, uh, uh, he's gonna love this. Wait for his smile when he sees this. To what? To join national team? Ah, Ronda! How old are you? 18 years old. Hey, Tom, you're gonna love this, man. You're gonna love this. Look at this. Arroz caldo. Oh, arroz caldo, yes. So this boy over here, 18 years old, he plans to join Ronda. Oh! Yes. Yeah, it's, wow. it's like a climbing, climbing body, huh? Tito Derwin here plans to join America's Got Talent. I thought he's gonna. Happy Noy Big Brother. He's gonna join Ron. Yeah. <laughs> Tito Derwin's uh, gonna join Pinoy Big Brother. Ah! Wow! Egg, egg silog. Thank you, Ate. Thank you. Okay, classic. So you're gonna join Ronda, huh? Why? Under developmental team. Under developmental, good. I good, good. idol coach. Coach. Ephraim. Ah. Inigo. Ah, nice. Ephraim who? Inigo. Inigo. Shout out to Coach Inigo. Okay. So this guy's uh, super strong on the climb, huh? Very strong. Nagets mo kung bakit malakas si Tommy? Di ba magamit lahat yung muscle ba? Uh, lahat ng power ko. Oo, oh, lahat ng power mo sa Chan. Okay, thanks. Signing off. Thanks for the free accommodation. <laughs> <laughs> Joke lang. Wait, yours is free? What the heck, man? No, no. Hey, the order is coming up. Oh, no, no. Torimodo suhi no tamiri